Good morning. I am your host, Marcus Johnson. You are live with TST Radio. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, we're going to go and get started on the show today. We're going to uh, go over some matchups for um, this coming up weekend college football. We have some great games coming up. Uh, first, we're going to start with Tennessee and Florida. Um, this has been a high-anticipated game by Tennessee and Florida. Florida's fans, um, Tennessee is coming into this game as a big, big, big favorite. Um, they have a 70% uh, percent chance of winning, leaving Florida with 29% chance of winning. Um, I think Florida really, they're getting slept on because how they finished the season. Well, they finished the season well on last year. They made it to the um, to the SEC championship, but their offense was kind of skeptical. It wasn't producing. So that's why I think they're such a small favorite on this game. Because um, Tennessee's been struggling this year. I think this game is built off of Tennessee's hype once again because they're struggling. To remind you, they were just struggling with um, Ohio, I think it was, this past weekend. Um both teams started, like I said, both teams started with high expectations. Um, both started real slow, but Florida has made the most improvement to me. Uh, they're playing very, very fast. Um, their defense is playing fast. Offense is playing fast. They're hitting big plays. Uh, but this weekend uh, against Ohio, Del Rio did get injured. Um, Appleby will be stepping in to replace him. That will be a big task to see if Appleby can uh, replace the shoes of Del Rio. They were just getting that offense started to move in how they wanted, and then that happened. So uh, that would be interesting to see if uh, Appleby can come in and step in and take Del Rio's shoes and keep that offense moving uh, smoothly. Um, Scarlett at running back and um, Callaway at uh, receiver has been big for the Gators this year. They've been making big plays. Um, They would need to have a big game to keep some of the pressure off um, Appleby. Um, They need to have the least pressure as they can on him. They don't need to uh, put very much pressure. They need don't make him make game time decisions keep him um, poised and in situations that he's used to this is this will be his first start so um uh, and it's a big game so they should um keep it keep it minimum and let him control the game be a game manager I think he'll be better as a game manager coming in as his first week don't look for him to make big plays just manage the game keep him in the game and let Callaway and Scarlett make the big plays for the team and other receivers on the team and um uh, Depend on that uh that that fast defense. Their defense is playing awesome. I think they should put most of the weight on the defense and let the defense win this game. So um Tennessee, they coming in, uh they struggled to Ohio, like I said. Florida's gonna really look to put pressure on Tennessee's uh offensive line. That's one of their weaknesses. It's been a weakness for for the um the start of this season. So uh, I feel like uh, Florida will bring pressure. Their uh, front four will put a lot of pressure on uh, Tennessee's offensive line. Dobbs, Hurt, and Malone will need to make uh, big plays to see if they can stretch out this um, Gators defense so the Gators just can't pin their ears back and come at the quarterback. Um, Like I said, they have a young quarterback. I know the Gators will... I know uh, the Gators will be pinning their ears back coming at Dobbs. So, uh, because of that uh, weak offensive line. So, they should... um, it should be a good matchup. I'm I'm waiting to see. It'll be one that I will be tuning in to. Uh, to move on, we're going to get into Auburn and LSU. Um, Auburn is coming off the loss to A&M. Um, that offense still didn't put up enough to win the game. Uh, both these, these are two teams with struggling offenses. They're struggling to find their identity in, uh, in the season. So uh, that's what, that will be a very low score. I think it will be a very low scoring game. Um, LSU is coming in with a fairly new quarterback. He started, what, one or two games. Um, he showed that he can throw the ball down the field. Um, he showed that he can uh, produce in the passing game, take some of the pressure off Leonard Fournette in the running game to get some of those people out of the box. Um, he showed that he can manage the game and not turn it over. So um, he's, he's came out and showed that he's what LSU has been missing. Uh, Sean White is yet to prove himself to me. Uh, he's coming off the loss to uh, A&M with 126 yards, no touchdowns. Um, he's still sharing the snaps with Franklin in third. Both teams, um, on paper, their rushing game is 
kind of identical with uh, Carrion Johnson with 56 carries, 278 yards with four touchdowns, and Leonard Fournette with 51 carries, 285 yards with two touchdowns. So um, I think uh, I feel like Leonard Fournette's stats should be way, way, way higher than that. But uh, like I said, they're kind of, both teams are struggling on the offensive side of the ball. They're coming in, uh, trying to find their identity and trying to put things together. Um, their their running game is almost identical. They're putting up the same type of numbers. Uh, Auburn would need more from their um, offense. Gus needs to open up that playbook and just let it fly. At this point, you have nothing to lose. So um, I feel like Auburn should be playing pin their ears back and be playing very, very, very good um, ball. Uh, we're going to jump into um, Wisconsin and uh, Michigan State. Um, this is pretty much an even matchup. This uh, matchup will come down to see which defense can um, stop the other offense and create force turnovers. Whoever wins the turnover battles, I think, will win this game. Um, turnovers will play a big factor. Um, whichever defense forces the most, I think, will come out on top on this game. Um, quarterback stats are pretty much the same. Um Houston for Wisconsin, 44 for 71, 527 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. O'Connor, 32 for 44, 431 yards, five touchdowns with two interceptions. Um, they're running, they're, they're running game. Their offense is pretty much identical, like I said. Um, Clemson's coming in, uh, um, not Clemson, Wisconsin coming in with uh, their running back, 42 carries, 197 yards, three touchdowns. Scott for Michigan State, 42 carries, 203 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, receiving, we have uh, Will Wright for uh, Wisconsin, 12 receptions, 194 yards. Uh, Mardares for um, Michigan State, 7 receptions, 125 yards. As you can see, their, um, their offense is pretty much identical. They're putting up pretty much the same numbers. That's why I said it would come down to the defense. Uh, Wisconsin defense has gave up uh, 261 yards. Michigan State's 313. But if you look, um, 178 of those yards for Wisconsin are passing. 241 for uh, Michigan State are passing. So um, you see uh, their secondary uh, weaknesses. Um, Wisconsin uh, rushing defense has only gave up 82, 82 yards. Uh, Michigan State, 72 yards. So they have real good rushing defenses. Like I said, the secondary will be a weakness. So look to see some of uh, these defense, some play actions, trying to um, get the ball down the field and explore these teams' weaknesses. So um, to move on, we have uh, Georgia and Ole Miss this week. Uh, Chad Kelly is coming out the loss to Alabama. Uh, he's getting off to a good start this year. He has a uh, 933 Total yards with 10 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. Um, he's turned the ball over a little more than I thought that he would. Um, versus Alabama, he was uh, he had a 63.4 uh, completion percentage. So, uh, threw for 421 yards, 3 touchdowns. Um, they hit some big plays um, against Alabama. And I look for them to do the same against Georgia. Um, I don't think Georgia can do much with... Um, this high power offense, um, their defense is kind of struggling. I think Evan Ingram's will have a big day. He will destroy the secondary. Um, all of um, Georgia stars they have mediocre seasons. Uh, Easton Chubbs and McKenzie. So if this continues, uh, Georgia might win five games on the season. Um, so um, that will be one I'll be tuned in. Another one is um, Clemson and Georgia Tech. Will be a good one this uh, Saturday. Uh, <clears throat> Clemson's coming in as a big favorite. I'm not surprised by that. Um, but while I am kind of surprised on the weak season they've been having. Um, last game, Watson came out and threw for 152 yards, three touchdowns. Even though they won, I feel like Watson numbers should be bigger. Um, Clemson is, like I said, Clemson's a big favorite. But I think Georgia Tech will put up a fight. Um, I think they'll put up a bigger fight than most people think that they will. Um, Alabama native Justin Thomas is coming off a good outing with 136 passing yards and one touchdown. Um, that last game, he's also leading the team in rushing with 169 yards. Um, Thomas is having a pretty good year. Um, he would need to have a big game to um, 
beat Clemson. Um, they would need Ricky um, Jeans, their um, receiver, to have a big game. Also, um, Tech defense will be will not only need to stop Watson, but they would need to stop Goldman and Williams on the offensive side of the ball. Both are both are really really having good seasons. So we'll see what Tech be able to contain those three stars and see if they can come out and um come out on top on a victory on that um we're gonna jump into some NFL football um on yesterday. Um I'm gonna give you some scores Cincinnati versus Pittsburgh. Um Pittsburgh took that sixteen to twenty four. Tennessee beat Detroit sixteen fifteen. Baltimore um beat Cleveland twenty five to twenty. Dallas beat Washington twenty seven to twenty three. Uh New Orleans fell short to uh, my Giants sixteen to thirteen. Uh San Francisco lost to uh, the Panthers twenty seven to forty six. Miami uh, fell short to New England twenty four thirty one. Um KC beat uh Houston twelve nineteen. Seahawks um fell short to the Rams three to nine. Tampa Bay fell short to Arizona, 7-40. Jacksonville fell short to the Chargers, 14-38. Atlanta beat uh, Oakland, 35-28. The Colts fell short to Denver, 20-34. Green Bay fell short to Minnesota, 14-17. Um, oh, those were some good games. One that I did catch was that last one, Green Bay and Minnesota. That was a great game. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, we're gonna get into some some guys that um that you probably have on your fantasy team that had a great outings on yesterday. Andy Dalton, Ben Roethlisberger, uh, Marcus Mariota, Matthew Stafford, Des Bryant, Dak Prescott, um, Kirk Cousins, Cam Newton. They all had great outings um, on yesterday. Mostly of quarterbacks. Um, Cam Newton three threw for uh, three hundred fifty three yards for touchdowns. Um, Kirk Cousins threw for 364 yards. Prescott, 292. Uh, Stafford, 260. Uh, Mariota, 238. Uh, Roethlisberger, 259. Uh, Andy Dahl, 366. Um, out of those, uh, I say Cam Newton had the biggest day. So um, if you have any of those people on your um, fantasy team, you're pretty happy this morning. Uh, we have um, tonight Philadelphia versus Chicago. Um, that that should be a good one, good defensive game. So uh, I will be tuned into that. So um, those are some um, matchups uh, coming up this week in the NFL football. We have um, Thursday night. We have Houston versus New England. I will be tuned in that one. That'll be a great game. Uh, New England's quarterback has just been hurt their backup quarterback has been hurt so it'll be good to see how they regroup and bounce back and who will start for them i'm i'm very eager to see who will get that start for them so um i will be tuned into that on thursday um i'll go over all of the other games on probably tomorrow we're not going to get into the weekend games today we're getting them probably tomorrow or wednesday or thursday um so um that is my time for the day. I am Marcus Johnson. I want to thank you for tuning in. Um, I want to give remind you um, tomorrow we will be at Lagoon Park Co-Ed Softball. Um, make sure you come out and show some support. Support those guys. I will be there. There will be another highlight video. So if you can't make it um, on my Facebook page at True Sports Talk Radio, on my uh, fan page at TST Game Day Fan Page. You can find it on Twitter at True Sports Talk. Um, make sure you go and check my um, Westside Classic Highlight video out. That was a very great game this weekend versus Carver and Lanier. Like I said, that's my time for the day. I am Marcus Johnson. Uh, this is TST Radio. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for all of your support, and we are out.